Welcome to part 6 of my series in which I analyze the music of Stephen Sondheim's musical, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. In this video, we'll look at the song, My Friends. We were going chronologically, but for this instance, I'll be switching the order of the next two songs. I'm doing this because the next three or four videos flow better if My Friends wasn't sandwiched in the middle. I don't have much to say in this song. In the first video, we already talked about alliteration in this song. But anyways, as most of the songs we've seen, this song also starts off with the Dies Irae quote. For those struggling to remember what this Dies Irae thing I'm talking about is, watch part 1. Let's hear it. To recap, it is a medieval hymn that represents death and vengeance. It has been quoted a lot such as from Brahms all the way to Lord of the Rings. and this musical extensively uses this motif. Anyways, My Friends starts off with these four notes. These are my friends. See. It is an inverse of what the first four notes of the Dies Irae are. Dies Irae. The only difference is that the first three notes in this song are separated by a major second rather than the Dies Irae's minor second. By inversing this melody, we have a melody that starts to ascend. It continues to ascend, and it is no coincidence that we reach the top of the peak at the word friends. To get to the top, he takes the first four notes, shrinks it down, removing the first note and shortening the next two notes. It is still a mutation of the Dies Irae. Since coming back to London, Sweeney has discovered his wife is dead and his daughter is locked up by the same tyrant that sent him to prison in the first place. He's at a very low point until Mrs. Lovett shows him that she has kept his razors. Things are looking up for him for the first time. And like how his mood and prospects are ascending, so is this song. These are my friends. See how they glisten. See this one shine, how he smiles in the light, my friend, my faith. Sondheim has always been a fan of long line composition. It is basically a very rough draft he writes of the song that details major landmarks. It can be something like, the song starts here and by the time it reaches this word, we're in this key. And starting here, we're going to start ascending, and when we finish this sentence, we should be at this note, under this chord. Sondheim probably used this long line technique when writing this song. We finally reach a powerful moment on the word home, when we hit a new highest peak, and a new note we've not heard in the song before. Well, I've come home to find you waiting. And at this point is where we get to descend back to where we first started. Well, I've come home to find you waiting. Home and we're together. And we do wonders, won't we? So now when you listen to especially longer and more plot-driven Sondheim songs, take a note of how longline writing might have shaped the song, where you started, where you journeyed to, where you ended up, and how it affects the story. That's all for this video. In the next video, we'll look at Poor Thing, and you won't believe the spoiler that Sondheim included in that song.
My right arm is complete again!